Jesus is risen. Yes, he is risen indeed. And we celebrate that Easter victory every single Sunday. Every Sunday is a little Easter. And we celebrate that Jesus is risen. He poured himself out, sacrificed himself to save us from sin and death. And he opened up to us the gate that leads to eternal life. And so Jesus' victory becomes our victory Um, As we um, invite Jesus in, as we give ourselves to Jesus, as we become disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus, as we become children of God, then Jesus' victory becomes our victory. And because he was raised, we too shall be raised. And that new, full, and eternal life begins now. We don't have to wait. We don't have to wait until we cross over to the other side. It begins now. Now, as we who want to be Jesus' followers um, respond to his command or his call, command, call, his call, command, it's probably both, to deny ourselves, to essentially pour ourselves out just as Jesus did, to sacrifice ourselves just as Jesus did. And as we do that, Holy Spirit takes root in our lives and fills our very being, cleans house, if you will, and shapes us and molds us and transforms us into the people that God has called us to be. So that our lives, lived like Jesus, reveal the living God. That new, full, eternal life, it begins here and now. As we surrender, as we submit, as we say, yes, God as we deny ourselves, as we die to self. As we heard last week and read in Mark's gospel, calling the crowd to him with his disciples, Jesus said to them, if anyone would come after me, if any would be my disciples, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Deny oneself. How do we do that? As with so many things in life, knowing the what is easy. Knowing the what is, is, is pretty simple to understand or to grasp that. But it's the application then of applying that what in a how that becomes difficult. How do we deny ourselves so that we can follow Jesus as his disciples. And that's what we're talking about. Last week we talked about, you know, one way that we deny ourselves is through giving. Today we're focusing on how we deny ourselves is by serving. By taking the form of of a servant. Or more literally, taking the form of a slave. Following Jesus' example Following Jesus' example, St. Paul writes in Philippians that Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Taking the form of a slave. To deny oneself is to take the form of a servant, literally take the form of a slave. And through that, we experience, it's one of those paradoxes, as we pour ourselves out, as we give ourselves away, as we take the form of not just a servant but a slave, we then experience the fullness of life that God has for us. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it, what Jesus says. A full life is a life poured out. A full life is a life poured out. And Jesus exemplified that by emptying himself, taking the form of a slave. John uh, chapter 13. If you want to follow along, we're going to read um, John chapter, the first part of John chapter 13, which is um, the, the account of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And in this we see a literal visual picture of Jesus taking the form, not just of a servant, but of a slave. 
I'm in the ESV, if you use the, a Bible on your phone and you can change versions, and if that's easier for you, I'm reading from the ESV. Starting at verse 1 there, it says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper... When the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, he rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but it is com completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. You know these things. Blessed are you if you do them. Literally took the form of a slave and washed their feet. Seems a strange, odd thing, this washing feet, right? Um, and in some churches, it's actually the tradition um, during Holy Week on that Maundy Thursday leading up to Easter, to have a, a worship service in which um, the, the pastor or priest or the, and leaders in the church wash the feet of the parishioners. It's a, kind of a very strange thing. What is this washing feet thing? Um, this was uh, something that was necessary in that first century time. Um, people wore sandals. They didn't have the fancy, you know, um, Skechers and uh, Nikes and uh, whatnot, um, New Balance, which I guess is, never mind, that's not, it's a, I got made fun of because I wear New Balance, and apparently that's old man's shoes, so, but they're comfortable, they're so comfortable, <laughs> right? To me, it's not about fashion anymore, it's about comfort. But they didn't have those shoes. They wore sandals, and they walked everywhere because, again, there's, there's no public transportation. I mean, only if you were, you know, super rich and could afford, um, you know, a, a chariot or one of those that you maybe see in those, you know, old movies of the Roman Empire, you know, and have a, a, a litter, I guess they call it. You know, some of them would literally carry you around in a little uh, covered kind of box type of thing. Um, unless you were like that super ultra wealthy, you walked where you had to go, in sandals, on these dry, dusty, dirty streets. And so people's feet were really nasty. They're still kind of nasty today, aren't they? Like feet, feet, like, you know, I mean, even with tennis shoes and socks, you know, like touching someone's feet after, you know, like a long, hard day at work when, you've been on, you know, when they've been on their feet all day, like that's not something that we're really like, oh yeah, <laughs> I would love to touch your feet, right? Not, right, okay, Mary, Mary's, uh, she's, 
working on, you know? Yeah. But I bet you you have had some experiences that were like, whoa, right? It's very humbling. It's very humbling to touch someone's feet. I was thinking about this, even like, you know, podiatrists, you know, foot doctors, like we kind of look down on them, right? Like as if they're not really doctors because, well, they're just dealing with the feet, you know? There's something about feet and touching someone's feet that is like, hmm. And in that day and age, there literally would be servants and slaves who would then, as, as you went into someone's home to have dinner, you know, to hang out and have fellowship at their home, um, they would have the servant, the slaves in the household, wash the feet because the feet were exposed in the sandals and they were dirty and nasty. And can you imagine the smell of the feet? And so slaves in the household, because this was the, the lowest job, so not just the servants did this, but the slaves. The slaves would wash the feet. And yet Jesus, in this moment, literally takes the form of a slave and washes the disciples' feet. Jesus, Lord of lords, King of kings, Messiah, God, in the flesh, humbles himself to the point of being taking the form of a slave to this act of washing the disciples' feet. To make the point that that's what this Christian life is all about. He embodies in this very literal, visual way what he was telling the disciples earlier in their journey, that if you want to be my follower, you humble yourself, you deny yourself, even taking the form of a slave, to serve one another, to serve others. We're very uncomfortable, I think, with this concept of, of uh, servanthood and especially slavery. I think in America particularly, the concept of taking the form of a slave makes us very uncomfortable for a host of reasons. I mean, it opens up a, you know, a common past that we share as Americans that I think we're very uncomfortable with. And we celebrate, right, our, our liberty and our freedom and our power that we have because we, are, we have liberty, because we have freedom, we have power. And so I think we're very uncomfortable with um, taking the form of a slave. We like independence. But servanthood, taking the form of a slave, that's something that I think we're very uncomfortable with. And yet, if there's any hope of us living like Jesus, if there's any hope of us um, actually um, becoming disciples through a process of, of becoming like Jesus, then we've got to embrace servanthood. I remember, I wasn't going to share this, but I think it, I think it applies. I was actually um, at a former church Having, we were having a debate on what, you, what word to use. Should we use the word volunteer or should we use the, the word servant? Should we, you know, volu- should we ask people and call people to volunteer or should we ask people and call people to serve? And those who were in favor of volunteer liked that word because they felt like that um, lifted people up. It kind of ele- elevated people. And they used the example of, you know, you have a volunteer fire, fire department. You know, they're not paid, but they're volunteer. But you, volunteer brings with it um, some element of, you know, of, of honor. And, uh, you know, we celebrate these people who are, who are volunteers. 
And so we should talk about volunteering in the church rather than serving. And yet those of us, and I was in this camp, saying it's about servant, being and serving, because that gets at the heart of what Jesus is talking about. He's not talking about elevating oneself and bringing honor to oneself. He's talking about pouring yourself out, literally taking the form of a slave. We're uncomfortable with that. And yet, if there's any hope for us to embody what it means to follow Jesus, then we've, we've got to embrace it. We have to embrace it. Get comfortable with taking the form of a slave and serving. That's where full life begins. And it's hard, isn't it, too? I mean, serving, um, it's hard work. And you don't get paid for it. (laughs) There's no reward in that way. Um, It's hard. Sometimes quite um, physically, like it's, it's demanding to serve, um, to take that, that form. Um, I just think yesterday, beautiful day yesterday, right? I mean, it was absolutely phenomenally beautiful. Um, it was like the second day this year, I think. <laughs> it was like, you know, could actually go outside and wear, wear a short sleeve shirt. And, you know, probably could have, I didn't wear shorts yesterday, but you probably could have wore shorts yesterday. It was absolutely gorgeous. What did I do yesterday? I spent most of the day inside cleaning house. Because my wife told me, she said, but before she left to go visit her children up north in the Rice Lake area on Thursday, she said, you know what I want for Mother's Day? And I was like, please tell me what you want for Mother's Day, because <laughs> I'm not a good gift giver, right? I need ideas. Tell me. Just tell me what you want, and I will make it happen. And she said, I would like the house to just be clean for Mother's Day. And I was like, I can do that. I will do that. And so Saturday, I spent pretty much all afternoon and into the evening cleaning house. I cleaned everything. I cleaned the stove and the front of the stove and wiped down all of the uh, what is it, stainless steel with the, those special rags for stainless, you know, cleaning stainless steel. And I cleaned the inside of the microwave. And I vacuumed Every inch of hardwood, well, it's laminate flooring, all the, you know, plain floor, and I mopped every floor, and I vacuumed every inch of carpet. I scooped the litter boxes and took the cat stuff out. (laughs) Uh, What else did I do? I took the vacuum cleaner hose and, like, you know, vacuumed edges of, you know, the, the trim and down the stairs, and, I mean, I cleaned all the bathrooms, the toilets, the sinks, the tubs, I scrubbed, I got down on hands and knees and cleaned the house from top to bottom, um, every inch of it, cleaned, I wiped down windows, I cleaned. And it took a long time, and it was hard work. By the end of the, not, by the, end of the day, like 7 o'clock last night, I was exhausted. I was literally <laughs> exhausted. And I just kind of collapsed and sat in front of the TV and Watch the new Star Trek show that just started, which is super awesome. Um, Check that out on Paramount+. Plus. I was exhausted. And this morning when I got, you know, my shoulders kind of ached a little bit. And, you know, from all that mopping and sweeping, it was hard, hard work. And, you know, even physically demanding to serve, to take the form of, of of a slave and do that for someone. It's hard, difficult, it's challenging. We're uncomfortable with it. But if we're going to follow Jesus, we're going to live lives that are Christ-like, to reveal the living God, then we've got to get comfortable with serving. And the other side of that, like it was, you know, it was awesome. I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed every minute of it. In part because there was some satisfaction, there, I mean, some honest satisfaction that came with seeing things get clean. But more so because I knew this is what my wife wanted. 
And I knew this is what would make her feel loved and appreciated. Um, this was her gift. And so I was very happy to do it. And every moment was very rewarding. I felt full. Even though I was poured out and literally felt exhausted, I felt full. And I guess maybe, I don't know, if I'm honest, a little bit proud of myself. And maybe that's not too Christ-like, but <laughs> there's a little bit of like, man, I just felt good about what I had accomplished that day, yesterday. It feels good to serve. And the impact that serving has on other um, is, can be eternal. Through our serving, through our taking the form of a slave, we can have... Let me rephrase that. As we humble ourselves and serve, take the form of a slave, through that, God will work and make eternal impact in people's lives. We've got a number of opportunities, um, and I forgot, I didn't bring my Connect card. On your Connect card, you can take that out now. On the back, there are some opportunities to serve here at Hillside. I think serving in and through the church is one of the best places to serve. You know, we have so many opportunities um, for philanthropy, um, for, for serving in our community. And there's lots of great organizations. Um, and, yet, and we should support those and do, whatever, do what we can and serve the, in those ways out there in the community, definitely. And yet at the same time, I honestly believe that the ministries of the church, as we serve in the church, that is one of the best places that we can serve because it will have eternal impact on people's lives. There's three areas that I've, we've highlighted there on that uh, Connect card. Um, and yes, I'm going to ask you <laughs> to check one, an area that you would be interested in serving in. We've highlighted three areas. Next Gen, which is, that's our Hillside Kids and, and the Hub, which is our youth group that meets once a month on Wednesday night. Um, that is an opportunity to serve here at Hillside in a, in a ministry area that has eternal impact. Um, that literally changes the trajectory of children's lives and the lives of youth um, as we share Jesus with them, as we build relationship with them. Um, it can literally um, have eternal impact and, ha and change the trajectory of a, of a child or a youth's life. I think back on my own life, and I, re I can remember um, people, when I was just a little kid, um, growing up in the Lutheran church, and you know, in the Lutheran church, you have acolytes. So acolytes were the, the little kids. Um, I probably started doing that probably when I was five or six years old, is my memory. Um, you'd light the candles in the church on, before the service, and you'd wear a little robe and have a little a taper, I think, if I remember right, it's called, like a little brass thing with a bell on the end to snuff the candle out, and then coming out the other end is a, the, uh, a wax kind of... Uh, paper that you light on fire, so you light the candles, and then after service, you'd put the candles out and, and snuff them out. So I was an acolyte, and I can remember, it's kind of funny, um, my memory is that we were always late to church. I'm sure that's not the case, but my memory is we were always late. Um, I, I just, I have memories of mom, like, zipping into the church parking lot the last minute and saying, you run, run, you got to get in there. And we, you know, little Jeffrey running into the church and there would be standing there waiting for me with the robe and the taper would be either uh, Mrs. Howout or Mrs. Grassberger. I remember the two of them, um, these adults in the church um, who served in our youth and our children's ministry. And uh, they taught Sunday school, they led youth group, and they helped the acolytes. And so Mrs. Grassberger <laughs> or Mrs. Howout would be there with the robe ready to help me, you know, put the robe on and get me into church um, so that I could light the candles. Such a simple thing. But, you know, I think as I thought about that and pondered on that, just by doing that, just being there, um, I, that created this sense that, you know, church was, was home. It was a place where I was welcomed. Um, they, were, they always had a, they were, they were never like angry that we were coming at the last minute. You know, always a smile on their face. So there was love shown in that and grace. And through that, I just, I just, I knew um, that I belonged, 
that I was welcome, um, that I was loved. And that just really, you know, uh, laid a foundation in my heart and in my life um, that, you know, it led to a lifetime in the church and, and even entering into to ministry because of their sacrifice, because of their serving in children and youth ministry in that way. Um, another thing that's on that card is, I don't remember what order they're in. Um, we got prayer team on there. Prayer team. This is something that we want to focus on as a church, prayer ministry, um, and build out a team of people who will pray um, in, a, in a couple of different ways. You know, to, we would like to make it possible to, for those of you who are comfortable with it or who would want this, to be able to indicate on your Connect card when you share a prayer request, to be able to you know, check a box there that says you know, something like, share this with the prayer team. So if you would like your prayer request to be a little, not public, but a little bit less than the private, you know, just you and the pastor, but be able to have the prayer team um, uh, have that shared with them so that during the week, you know, people who are on the prayer team would be praying for you. Um, this is something that we want to get going and get started. A, a, a team of people who are dedicated to praying over those prayer requests, um, coming into the building during the week and praying over the building, praying for the ministries that happen here, praying for everyone who, you know, comes into this church, um, you know, just praying over the church, literally. Um, we want to get a prayer ministry, a prayer team started. Um, that's been a profound thing in my life as I've participated in prayer teams, um, to pray over people um, and to see the miraculous things that God does through prayer. Um, more than once, um, as I've prayed over people and asked for healing, they've come for like drastic things like leukemia, cancer, things like that. And to have people come back weeks later and say, I was healed, that is a powerful thing. Or to pray with people as they accept Jesus and walk them through that process of, of saying yes to Jesus and beginning a life of discipleship. That's eternal impact as we serve. We serve in that way. Um, the other thing that's on there is facility team. Um, we want to get a facility team started. We've got some leaders already who are willing to take on some of these things like electrical and plumbing. And I mean, that could be, it could be you know, serving on facility team could be anything from just, you know, changing some light bulbs around the church because we've, we've always got light bulbs going out and things like that, you know, checking furnace filters and, um, you know, whatever, mowing grass. Um, to like bigger things, like you know, doing some bigger uh, repair type things that I know nothing about, um, but others do. Um, this is an opportunity to serve. Uh, I remember being blessed by um, trustees in a church who served in that way. Um, at a church I was serving in Ohio, we lived in the parsonage, and um, the water out in the middle of nowhere country, okay? So well water, and suddenly the water just quit working, and it was 4th of July weekend, um, and the water quit working. But I called, you know, the, one of the trustees, and they came over and checked it out, and they figured it out. The, I don't know anything about this stuff, but the pump at the bottom had to be replaced. These guys came out and spent their 4th of July pulling that thing out, and, and they had, and it was like stuck down in there. I remember, like, they had to go get a, a thing, like a, not a forklift, but a bucket thing, like a, you know, like a thing with a bucket on the end, and like hook chains to it down in there somehow. I don't, and like, like, pull this thing out of there. They spent all day, their 4th of July, to get the pump, you know, working, and so the, the well working, so that we had water at the parsonage. To be on the receiving end of, of that servanthood, that serving, um, I would say that's eternal impact. To know that you're loved and cared for and that you're, you're, you're in this together, you're part of this family of God that serves one another, that's an amazing, powerful thing. 
um, that can literally change people's lives. Jesus calls us to deny ourselves as we follow him, to humble ourselves, to take the form of servants, of, of even slaves, to serve one another so that people can see and experience the living God in and through us. So I invite you um, to think about how might God want to use you. Um, how are you already serving in the community here at Hillside or in maybe in other churches? How might God want to use you to serve? And consider, pray over that, use that Connect card. Um, check one of those boxes for opportunities here at Hillside. You're not signing your life away if you do. You're basically saying, you know, I'd like to know more about this. I think maybe God could use me in that next-gen ministry, helping, you know, teaching kids or helping with youth group. Or, you know, I've, I know something about, I, I know how to change light bulbs. Maybe God can use me um, in serving in facilities. Um, or I love praying with people. Or maybe, you know, maybe you're like, I don't have the greatest prayer life, but I would like to grow in that. Um, and I would like to, you know, expand my prayer life. So maybe prayer team is something that um, God would, could use you in and help you grow as a disciple. And I just, I would like to know more about that. I'd like to know more details. Check the box and then drop that card in the, uh, the basket there for the connect cards. And this week, someone will be in touch with you, whether it's me or Jody or one of the other leaders here at Hillside, someone will be in touch to give you more details um, hear from you, get to know you, and, um, and uh, just and go from there. How can God serve you? Or how can God use you as you serve, as you humble yourself, take the form of a slave to have eternal impact? Let's pray. Almighty God, um, you call us into relationship with you. You send us out. Um, into the world, in, into the church, into the places and spaces where we find ourselves during the week um, to live like your son Jesus and to reveal your glory. As we focus on, on how you are calling us to serve, to humble ourselves, to take even the form of slaves so that you may be revealed, lead us, guide us, um, open our eyes to see where you're leading us and calling us and sending us, um, we open our hearts to you. We say yes to you. We submit to you. We surrender. Use us. Use us as you will. Reveal your glory. To have eternal impact. That people may experience the new, full, and eternal life that you have for them, that we may experience the fullness of life that you have for us, the full life that comes from pouring ourselves out. In Jesus' name, amen.